Hi friends, been a while since we just sat on the couch and had a conversation. What should we talk about today? Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Went for a walk on the beach this morning, very relaxing. In my cleaning up project around here, I had a big bonfire the other night. I'm burning a big pile of trash. I don't put any plastic in it, but wood and trimmings from the yard. And uh, a whole bunch of it is that, oh, I don't want to burn my hose. A whole bunch of it is that uh, old workbench, two of them, that I was cleaning out that I talked about in my last video. Um, making quite a fire. You can see that the smoke is blowing out towards the lake. That's why I burn at night, because in the daytime the breeze is coming off of the lake towards the house, and as soon as the sun goes down, the heat rises out of the heat sink of the water of the lake. And that draws air down out of the mountains on the other side of the house. So it blows out to the lake at night. Here we have leaf cutter ants. And they're going over here. There's a big soldier going by. And where are they going? They're going over here to eat an avocado, among other things. They're cleaning that avocado out. Well, fire's burning down. I did have a hose going here just in case. But it'll probably just smolder all night. It really can't go anywhere. It's all concrete over there. Stone wall. Nothing over there to burn. It'll be okay. Plus the wind comes up. Of course, my house is concrete and, and also, so probably not a problem. Back into the workshop. Miss Lynn's watching some MMA, eh? You bet. My daughter visited this week. So, you're going to have to suffer through a little family silliness. <laughs> Cockaburl sits in the old gum tree. Every merry king of the light can see. Is he? <laughs> we laugh, we just laugh. decided we must have a different verse. Cookaburra sits in the old gum tree, Mary, Mary, King of the Bushes, he laugh, Cookaburra laugh, Cookaburra gay, your life must be.
can find anything interesting or positive in the Guadalajara Reporter. It's the English language newspaper that comes out here on Fridays. Uh, I don't like to read bad news. See if we can find anything good. Uh, Itzlokan cops stay behind bars. Um, Someone died in their custody. I'll leave it to you to decide if that's negative or positive. Definitely the death was. Um, Mexico urged to issue vaccine certification. Who urges them? Mexican legislators. Never mind that. Light plane lands on the Macro Libramento. Um, the Macro Libramento is a ring road that goes around the whole city of Guadalajara. There's an inner ring road called the Periferico, and then an outer one that's way out called the Macro Libramento. Anyway, a little plane landed on it. I'm going to say that's good news because compared to what could have happened, that would have been bad news. It is good news. Uh, political stuff, political stuff, political stuff. Uh, we don't need to talk about any of that crap. I mean, it's got political stuff, political stuff. Oh, here, electric buses make their bow as Jalisco meets climate change challenge. Hey, that's cool. Um, I read the article. It's 28, uh, they're 28 foot buses, 18.6 meters. And uh, they're made in China. And they're going to have 38 gleaming new electric buses arrived in Guadalajara last week, confirming that Jalisco is serious about honoring its commitment to tackle climate change. Uh, Jalisco Governor Enrique Faro said the buses will be able to transport transport 20,000 users each day and eliminate up to 4,000 tons of carbon dioxide. Well, that doesn't make sense. You can't haul 4,000 tons in a bus. Oh, they're talking about all 38 of them. Oh, okay. That makes a little more sense. What else is going on here? Cruise ships return to Mexico. That's good unless you're in Puerto Vallarta or Mazatlan and you just want to be hanging out and not associating with a whole bunch of tourists off of a cruise ship. <laughs> i got to show you this one. This is a picture. First I'm going to read you, it's an it's a, it's a ad for a plastic surgery. And the ad says, if it sags, bags, or drags, go see Dr. Ben. So I guess I'm doing a shout out for Dr. Ben, but here's what strikes me as funny. I'm pretty sure that's a picture of Dolly Parton. <laughs> I wonder if Dr. Ben is paying to use her image. Uh, she looks pretty good. I'm not going to give Dr. Ben the credit for it, though. I've been a Dolly Parton fan for many years. As a matter of fact, my daughter's middle name is Jolene. And one of the number one hits at the time she was born was Dolly Parton's song, Jolene. That's why she's named Jolene. <sighs> oh, my gosh. Oh, Ed Tasca. Now, um, they say that um, plagiarism is the... Um, highest form of flattery. That's not exactly right. I, as a matter of fact, I know a little bit more about that. It was uh, a guy named Cotton in 1824 said, 
imitation is the greatest form of flattery. And then it was plagiarized <laughs> decade after decade. So now it's plagiarism. Uh, Ed Tosca, he writes a column in the Guadalajara Reporter, and I love the articles that he writes. It's always something serious, but it's tongue-in-cheek a lot of times. This one doesn't seem to be tongue-in-cheek. And I'm going to talk about it because it's something that um, happens to me with regard to the issue. So first, just let me read the first couple of paragraphs. Uh, in Ahik's new position of honor, he's talking about uh, the fact that Ahik is now a uh, Pueblo Magico, a magic city uh, designated as such. Um, as uh, in its new honor, the promotion of its benefits, charms, and amenities has resulted in what could become an uncontrolled population surge from North America and beyond. Some estimates have it that new residents and tourists will be invading Lakeside by as much as 5,000 new migrants every year. Infrastructure here will be teeming with issues no one can imagine. Actually, we can imagine it because it's already happening. And somebody at a later date will be writing letters and complaining that the media didn't explain and complain about these issues enough. So... Here, for the record, is my deconstruction of the issues. And I'm not going to read it to you, but I'm just going to, I'm to, I'm going to take Ed's uh, points and uh, talk about them a little bit myself. Uh, number one, roadway overload. Uh, when we came here 20 years ago, it was a fairly sleepy little town, and uh, we predate Walmart and Soriana, the big box stores, but you could drive across town or drive from here to Chapala in like, you know, 10 minutes. And uh, now, getting to Walmart, which is like maybe one-fourth of the way to Chapala from my house, um, it could take me a half an hour to go and a half an hour to come home because of the traffic. And how does that issue relate to me? I'm not... Uh, uh, it relates to me in two ways. First of all, it relates to me because I'm one of those guys sitting in the traffic all of that time. And the other way it relates to me is that I can't tell you how many times a week I'm at Walmart or the ATM or in a restaurant or just walking down the street and people say, Hey, JC, we came here because of you or Jerry Brown. And my canned response is, uh, please don't tell my friends because they're blaming me for all of the traffic in town. Yes, the roadway through Ahihik is challenged. I would like to make the point, and I've made this before, that it's not entirely we foreign expats who are causing the problem. First of all, it's one little lane through a very congested area. But... Part of the problem is that there's a growing middle class in Mexico. More Mexicans have cars. More cars, more traffic. And the other thing is that we are, the weekend and even during the week, the destination for Guadalajara, a city of 5 million people. We're the beach for 5 million people. And uh, they come down here. They come down to the restaurants. They come down for the fresh air. They come down to get away from the city. And uh, bad as the traffic is here, it's not nearly as congested as it is in Guadalajara, a city of 5 million people. So um, the fact that we are 35 miles from a city of 5 million and the fact that the growing middle class in Mexican means that there are more Mexicans who have cars, is part of the problem. I'm not saying that we foreign expats aren't part of the problem. We certainly are. Um, and um, I do get blamed <laughs> for some of it. Uh, Ed's point number two. Something called urbanization, meaning too many people in too small an area, is going to happen. Well, I think it's already happening. Um, there are a lot of people here. The population of 
um, the north shore of Lake Chapala is about 200,000, and that's in a strip along the north shore of about 20 miles. And uh, that's from Hakotepec all the way to about um, oh, seven, eight miles east of Chapala. And um, along that area, there are a lot of foreigners who have retired uh, expats. Uh, that population of 200,000 um, has an expat population of around 15,000. It can go up in the winter and down a little in the summer, but uh, probably averages out about 15 to 18,000 expats. So you see, we are not the major part of the population here. Um, and Again, talking about the traffic, uh, I don't think we are the major part of the traffic problem. Although it's very easy <laughs> to blame Jerry Brown and me, JC, for too many people I haven't come to Mexico, and I, he in particular, because it is such a wonderful place. And it is a wonderful place. Uh, Ed goes on to uh, explain that there might be some solutions to that. Um, and uh, again, it's tongue-in-cheek, and I'll let you read the Guadalajara report of yourself. Anyway, hey, been nice having a little chat with you. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up, and please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind.